Yuying Song is uh, from Pinkhead, and she will uh, present Benchbot, which is a benchmarking service uh, for TidyB. So looking forward to your talk. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Yuying Song, a uh, data uh, database performance engineer from Pinkhead. App, it's so delighted uh, to present how we uh, build our performance infrastructures in PinCap to the database uh, DB test community. Today, my topic is Benchbot, uh, benchmark as a service for TiDB. Uh, first of all, what is TiDB? TiDB is an open source new SQL database that supports hybrid uh, transactional and analytical processing workloads. It's MySQL compatible. Uh, its goal is to uh, provide the user a one-stop database solution that uh, can cover all LTP, ORAP, and HTAP services. It's suitable for uh, a lot of use cases that require high availability and strong consist consistence and with large-scale data. Um, like uh, in the past, like uh, uh, benchmarking to other, uh, most other database, two obstacles of benchmarking TIDB is how to prepare the hardware resources and data set. And according to a survey in our company, that uh, it, it usually takes half a day to, to get both of them prepared. So that's why we introduced a bench boards. Benchboard is a, is a user-friendly performance testing self-service developed by the PinCap performance testing team to make TiDB benchmark easier, faster, and stable. Um, its slogan is easier, faster, stabler, and together. And here comes its architecture. Uh, you can see here. Uh, it's an end-to-end -end automatic benchmark service based on Kubernetes. Uh, you can set up the uh, periodical uh, tests like daily round, weekly round, and release tags with the test case management system, or you can just run a one-shot test with the command line tools here. After the case was submitted, uh, a test case and a test plan will be created. Uh, the test case will describe uh, which workloads you want, to run, you want to run and how you want to run it. And the test plan will list it, uh, the test plan listed the hardware resources you required and uh, the topologic uh, of the TIDB cluster. And then Benchboard will apply resources you required. And here it comes to, uh, and deploy the TIDB cluster for you and run the test case and collect the test results. After the test, if you upload the performance data to a central database and the monitoring and log data to clinic services, which is a diagnostic services provided by PinCap for TIDB cluster troubleshooting. Last but not least, after, uh, after the test, you can check the performance results and alerts in the benchboard uh, be uh, dashboard here. Okay, uh, for most of the users, uh, uh, for most of the developers in PinCap, you only need to care about the uh, command line tools and the benchmark, uh, benchboard dashboard. Uh, uh, because you, want, uh, you only need to know how to submit the case and check the results, how to check the results. And with this architecture, uh, we also can, because it's based on, you can see it's based on Kubernetes. So it's, it's easier for us to deploy it on cloud platforms, which provides permanent services. So uh, to tax uh, TIDB cloud services, we also provide cloud services. And here uh, you can see it's also convenient for us to change the SQL, SQL engines here. Uh, so it helps us to compare the performance of TIDB and other MySQL compatible database. And now let me give you some examples, uh, more examples, how it makes the uh, benchmark uh, easier, faster, and stabler. Uh, when it, uh, first, easier. With a single benchboard uh, command, we can share the following resources across the com whole company. Uh, first, the, the hardware resources we mentioned before, and the daily run benchmark pipelines and data set provided by the uh, performance testing team. 
we, we prepared near, nearly 30 workflows, including standard benchmarks like TPCC, TPCH, and CISBENCH, and other homegrown workloads. Um, and here, uh, after the test, all the results were showed on the database, uh, on the benchmark dashboard. You can see uh, which workload you run and which version, the thread and the, the duration of the test. And the most important uh, performance metrics like TPS, QPS and average latency and so on. And you can also see the, the, the commit hash here of each component. Click on the link and it will, uh, it will show you the, the, the commit, page, commit page on GitHub. And also the monitoring and logs information here. And thanks to the clinic service and uh, continuous profiling features of TIDB, uh, is, uh, most of the performance metrics and instant, instant profiling has been collected during the test. So uh, when there was uh, performance issues, engineers can debug according to those materials. No, there's no need to reproduce the issues under most under most circumstances. Uh, for example, here with the clinic service, we have collect the metrics, the, the instant logs and slow queries. And with continuous profiling, uh, uh, continuous profiling collects um, performance information continuously for each TIDB components instance. Uh, the, the collected database of uh, the collected performance data could be visualized as frame graph, you can see here. Uh, uh, here is an example, you see, after investigation, we find that this, this function, Scala functions, uh, has consumed a significant part of CPU's resources uh, to, to, to handle the JSON in a query. And after apply, uh, apply a hot fist, after applying a hot fist, you can see the function was gone, and so as the performance issue. Uh, uh, when it comes to faster, uh, here is an example of our command, command uh, how to use our command lines too. Uh, you can change the, the, the bench type and, and the thread number and version you want to test and even uh, the, the configurations. Uh, with this single command, four benchmark will be submit. Uh, OLTP, you can see it's this bench OLTP write only, OLTP insert. And uh, with the TIDB, uh, TIDB feature, rough engine on and off. And all the all these four benchmarks will be run in the same hardware environment and their matrix data will be shown together. And it's easier. So therefore it's easy for our developers to compare the performance change, changes. Uh, uh, brought the performance changes brought by the features. Uh, when it comes to stabler, the majority challenge of this project is to provide stable uh, test environment and repeatable data, uh, repeatable uh, performance data re test results. To ensure these two things, uh, we first will run the test that with higher stable requirements in on fixed Kubernetes nodes uh, to keep it stable. And for all the benchmark pipelines, uh, we will subject it to stable assessment and a daily round will, will be performed on, uh, about it and with a regression alert. Here's an example how we, uh, how we keep the test environment stable. We used to use HA proxy for a long time uh, until we noticed this uh, unstable performance about the Cisbench uh, or LTP poislet. You can see the 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 qu query per second QPS uh, is unstable, uh, fluctuate from day to day, and after uh, investigation, we find that HA proxy uh, is is blamed for it. And we change it, change to use, we change to use the Kubernetes project of, of Kubernetes. After changing the project, the QPS gets stabler. Not only the, the 
the QS get stabler and the performance get improved by more than 20%. You see it here. here. Uh, together, uh, dashboard not only help us to make tidy benchmark uh, easier, faster, stabler, it also improves the cross team co collaborations efficiency. Performance issues discovered in daily run and release tasks can be easily reproduced with a single benchmark command. And since, 2020, uh, and since 2021, more than 80 major, major bugs and performance issues has been discovered by benchmark. And, and it has become the standard service to verify new performance features. Uh, future work. Uh, first is community support. Uh, uh, as I mentioned before, TidyB is an open source database that benefits a lot from all the contributors from community. It's our duty to share these services uh, inside and outside our company to let our contributors enjoy developing and testing TidyB. Therefore, we are going to uh, enable the community contributors to submit tasks to Benchboard on GitHub. Another one is um, TidyB Cloud is a very important commercial product of Pincap. Guaranteed the, the quality and performance of our products is our priority, uh, top priority. So we plan to support testing on TidyB Cloud and other cloud platforms with Benchboard. Uh, this all about my sharing. Okay. okay. Thanks a lot for the very interesting presentation. Any questions? Okay. Perhaps uh, let me start with one. So do you still have any pain points or open challenges that you want to address? Like where it's not very clear how to address them? Uh, pain point. Uh, uh, pardon, can you ask, uh, can I say it again? So at the high level, I was wondering whether there are any kind of open challenges that you still want to address, where it's not ah. very clear how, how you will address them. Uh, so, it, 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 uh, so we, we now, we, we, in, in order to keep the, the test environment stable, so we, we use fixed Kubernetes nodes. So it, it's not, uh, actually, it's not a, a, a right way to use Kubernetes. <laughs> you know, the Kubernetes uh, is about sharing, no, but, but it's not stable. When we run uh, two tests on the same Kubernetes pool, pool and they, they will, they will uh, uh, no, uh, we run two, two tests on the same hardware uh, or servers, they, the resources cannot balance and it will, it will influence the performance. So we are trying to find a way and find the why uh, the root cause of the unstable. So to, to, make, to make full use of Kubernetes. <laughs> okay. I see, I see. Okay, thanks. Thank you. So we have a question here in the audience. Mm -hmm. If not, uh, I mean, I also have a question. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. So let me ask one question. So mm -hmm. you, you mentioned a little bit about the uh, uh, regression test. And in your example, you said that the proxy is one of the cores that makes the stable, uh, uh, that, that makes the system unstable. So I'm not imagining how much causes are there that makes the system unstable like that are there any like the concurrent uh, transactions or the size of the provisions so what are the major causes that makes the system unstable uh, uh, may i ask my colleague to help me to ask this question uh Hanshin, are you here are you there uh yes um it actually an uh, interesting performance case we spend some time to investigate that um, uh, because in the uh, as 
uh, UE show that uh, the you can see the uh, QPS and the uh, query latency is uh, uh, vary a lot during different run. And uh, one of the factor we figure out is that the um, connection idle duration, which is that um, because all the traffic from Sysbank need to go through the HA proxy and then dis distribute into the uh, TIDB cluster. And we figure out that uh, under the high low, the HA proxy is not provide very consistent um, network latency. So we give you a try, we just repeat replace the H HA policy with um, Q policy, which is initially a DNS uh, a DNS service. So any workload from the uh, Sysbench go directly into TDB cluster. There's no, no policy. So we find that um, uh, Sysbench can, uh, can issue more workload into TDB. This is why you uh, show that there is a 20% QPS increase. And we, we find that the system overall is more stable. This is the, uh, the story. The, the, yeah, yeah, I really understand that the performance of the communications really affects to the throughput like the DNS performance or like the uh, performance of the proxy. And do you have any other examples that makes the system unstable? That, is, that was my question. Oh, okay. Other example of unstable. Mm. Environment things. Uh, you, you, you mean example about the environment unstable, right? Yes. Ah, uh, yes. Mm. Uh, Hanshan, can you come up with any? Uh, I, I just, I, I need I, to check I, the I list. I think we, uh, <laughs> we come across uh, several common uh, unstable issues. Uh, the first one is just, uh, you can just share that uh, we need to uh, buy, you, as you know that, um, uh, TeleV has the compute layer and storage layer, and, and uh, we need to uh, buy the buy the compute layer to fix uh, machine in the pool and buy the uh, storage layer to fix machine to make sure that uh, the repeat runs are stable. And uh, this is one of the thing. And um, I think uh, other, um, uh, stable issue we come across like the, um, like we use uh, YSSP workload and uh, the client, the, the, at the client side, they may distribute the uh, uh, work to different thread, uh, but we notice that uh, some of the thread are uh, computer, computer work uh, before, uh, before other threads. So uh, the, the total average uh, QPS may not be stable. This is related to the uh, to the uh, client client bench work implementation, and other like if the workload cause like a series uh, load contention or hotspot uh, across the TKV the storage layer, there's may the the workload may not be uh, stable. So we try to avoid this kind of issue before providing the benchmark and the, 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 the workload to the developer. So uh, there, this is the, comes to the importance that uh, before deliver the new workload uh, uh, to the developer, we need to do the uh, stability assessment. Okay. Thank so you. I think we're good in the room. I think we have time perhaps for a very quick question. I think Pinar, you wanted to ask one, right? Uh, yeah, but I think that may be a bit long because I was going to ask about uh, the challenge of having an HTAP benchmark. Uh, 
but I think let's go to the break in the interest of time. So we can take it offline off on Slack. Uh, Okay, I mean, we can officially start a break now and we'll be back okay. in 20 minutes, but for those who are interested to stay, perhaps you can still go ahead and, and ask, it would be interesting. Okay, yeah, so I mean, uh, like uh, there is like here also, like in, in your figure, you have OLTP point uh, query example, uh, but your system is built, of course, for HTAP uh, scenarios. But today, I mean, to the best of my knowledge, there is not a good HTAP benchmark still. Uh, so, I mean, what, what, what would you say, recommend for that? Like if people want to devise a more standardized benchmarking solution for uh, HTAP uh, workloads, rather than just mixing up TPCC and TPCH, which is not really uh, HTAP. <laughs> Uh, well, I I think the, the the best we find in the community is the CH bench, which mm -hmm. is the TBCC plus the TBCH. Mm -hmm. We actually, uh, we actually find some of the bugs, and uh, and uh, uh, for the H type features, uh, just by just running the uh, H type uh, bench, because you if you run you, you run the TBCC uh, workload, so you generate a uh, lot of transaction log, and this log need to uh, replicate to the type flash node, which is the, 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 the AP module. And, uh, and uh, at the same time, um, you, you, you will run a multiple AP thread, which is um, uh, cause lots of uh, uh, query pressure mm -hmm. uh, for the AP nodes. Mm -hmm. And uh, very interesting, we, 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 we find among the AP bugs performance issue we find, we find last year, there's a, a dozen of find uh, a, a bug is, uh, is discovered by the CH benchmark, which have us to, to, to locate the, the, the uh, performance inefficiency, in not only the data replication from type KB to type flash, but also uh, the uh, the memory manager memory manager module or the query optimizer uh, uh, op query optimizer module. So I think the the the, the one I want to suggest is the CH benchmark. Really helpful for us. Okay. Okay. So, but yeah. Uh... I wish there was something, I don't know, slightly better uh, or yeah, more interesting, but that's still fair. It's, it's a valuable benchmark. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for the talk and the answer. Yeah. Thanks again. Thank you. Okay. So I would say we take the less, uh, rest of the questions offline and uh, uh, continue or start with the break. So we'll be back in 15 minutes or 17 minutes where Mark will give the first uh, keynote.